so we'll get started uh, here uh, for our event. Uh, thanks to everybody for coming. We really appreciate you showing your support this evening. Uh, my name is Nick Wanakowski. I am the chair of this event because uh, they asked me to do it and I agree. So, uh, so I guess that's the, the qualifications for, uh, for the chairing. Uh, I'm president of QP Local 3761, which is the staff for the Saskatchewan Union of Nurses, where I work as an uh, as a employment relations officer, which is a very long title for a union rep. Uh, first off, uh, I just wanted to address the fact that uh, Tahir Sima, who was uh, supposed to and scheduled to be here with us this evening, uh, couldn't attend due to visa difficulties. Uh, Normally, we would probably just not mention that he couldn't come, <laughs> but uh, he provided a written statement uh, to us, and so what I'm going to do is just uh, read his uh, his bio and then the statement that he uh, that he provided to uh, to the organizers of the, the national tour. Um, I'm going to say some things after the talk's over too, so don't rush off because you'll miss those important and insightful comments. <laughs> that would be, you know, just really, I mean, hard lunch for all of us, I think. Um, before I get to the statement, uh, I just wanted to introduce uh, Dr. Amjad Barham, who is uh, the head of the Palestinian Polytechnic University Employees Union and the president of the Palestinian Federation of Unions of University Employees and Professors. Uh, it's difficult to say which unions and the federations they belong to without reading them right off of the uh, documents you have because they're also very long. <laughs> and, uh, that's a fact in Canada as it is in, in Palestine, which is good to see. Uh, the federation represents unions <coughs> at all Palestinian universities in the West Bank and Gaza. Dr. Barham is a professor in applied mathematics and uh, PFUUPE is a member of the Palestinian Union Coalition for Boycott Divestment Sanctions. Uh, and the acronym for that is PTUCBDS, which uh, you can Google when you get back to your homes. Uh, and that includes almost the entirety of the blocks composing the Palestinian trade union movement and is based on the Palestinian Civil Society call for boycott divestment and sanctions that was made in 2005. Uh, and, as, uh, and so, Thank you for coming. Uh, we, we very much appreciate that. And tonight, uh, the translator that we will have uh, to my left, uh, who was very nice to agree to uh, translate for the event both this afternoon and this evening, is uh, Mahmoud. So I think he's not going to need me that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, well we, we will need you to watch. <laughs> not safe enough. It's always good to have a safety net. You know, never, never hurt. Uh, and to hear Sima, who was to be here in whose statement I'm going to read, is the national uh, spokesperson for the South African Municipal Workers Union. And uh, that was founded in 1987. And with a membership of 122,000 uh, people, it is one of the largest public sector unions in South Africa. Uh, to hear Sima is a founding member of the South Africa based Coalition for a Free Palestine. Um, so if everybody's okay with it, and I guess even if you're not, I'm going to read the statement uh, that was sent to us by Tahir. So um, let us be, uh, so it's entitled, Message from the Coalition for a Free Palestine and the South African Municipal Workers Union to our Canadian Comrades com Campaign for a Free Palestine. <coughs> let us begin by expressing our warmest of greetings to all comrades and friends in Canada who share the view that the resolution of the crisis in the Middle East, and especially in Palestine, Israel, is a vital priority for all of us. Further, that it must no longer be left up to the politicians and international bureaucrats and those with external vested interests to resolve. Despite the difficulties inherent in doing so, we share with you a belief that providing opportunities for our members and the public at large to examine and discuss the issues without prejudice is a crucial task, and made especially important by the fact that there exists a dominant media who represents interests that are not committed to a just and peaceful solution. Here in South Africa, there is a growing interest in the Palestinian-Israel crisis. And as you will be aware, there is not the type of reactionary backlash from vested interests that many of you have to deal with. The 
This is in part due to the fact that leading politicians, scholars, and civil society leaders have been able to examine the situation and make up their own minds. Many South Africans, after seeing for themselves the challenges faced by the Palestinian community and the way that the Israeli state and its defenders behave, are abundantly clear that apartheid did not end when elections took place in South Africa. The fact that so many South Africans are able to relate to the shocking conditions that the Palestinian community has to endure, and especially in terms and levels and form of, of discrimination. That is why we in South Africa do not have any doubt that what currently exists in Palestine Israel is rightly called apartheid, and this is not a label that we would apply lightly devastating impact. Permit us to say that we believe that the Boycott Divestment Sanctions Campaign provides one of the most tangible means to fuse together a new democratic response to Israeli apartheid. For this reason, we are trying to ensure that all municipalities declare themselves apartheid Israel free zones and take the opportunity to provide education for the public in general about why the free the Free Palestinian Campaign must be supported. We appreciate, the su we appreciate that supporting the BDS campaign will be more difficult to extend in a hostile environment, but we are certain that it provides a concrete way forward. The Coalition of South African Trade Unions, led Coalition for a Free Palestine, has run a, run a number of campaigns in South Africa to popularize the Boycott Divestment Sanctions Campaign and to provide the much needed support and information to trade unions and civil society formations. Most Kasatu unions are now doing all that is possible to ensure South Africa does not deal with apartheid Israel goods and services. <coughs> this commitment also comes with its own challenges, which we are certain, with time and support from the international trade union movement, we will be able to overcome. The coalition, since its inception, has also lobbied government and key institutions to ensure that the ongoing struggle in Palestine and, in re and Israel's apartheid nature is known. We have made progress in this regard and are certain that eventually the policies of our government with regards to the relations with Israel will change in support of the oppressed people of Palestine. We hope that this message represents one small step towards strengthening the bonds that exist between us. We look forward to very many more interactions and joint work. Um, so, and that was uh, the statement provided by Tahir, and I promise I did not make any of it up. <laughs> you can come up and check after the event if you want to go over the sheet. It's all there. Okay, and uh, without, any, without any uh, more uh, delays. stands out as a bright example of a long tradition of effective union solidarity. Today, there is a growing international campaign against apartheid Israel, and trade unions are once again taking the lead in defending the Palestinian, the, the Palestinian people's right of self-determination, justice, freedom, equality, and the right of our people to return back to their homes. Since your courageous resolution, which have been taken by your union, many more unions have passed the BDS, the Palestinian Coalition for Boycotting Israel. The South Af Africa Municipal Workers Union promoted the Israeli apartheid free zone to ensure that the municipalities have no commercial, academic, cultural, or sporting, or other connection at all with the Israeli regime. Similar campaigns by the trade union activities have struck across the world, including, including in Ireland and Australia. Dock workers have been especially proactive in their supporting 